Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. And today we're going to be looking at the most gory, brutal, violent, terrifying superhero battle uh, that's ever been documented in, uh, in comic book pages. But first, uh, we have a new project that we have uh, that we want to spread the word about, man. Cartoonist Kayfabe Comic Book Christmas in July uh, is where Jimmy and I and all of you are going to be grabbing all of your comp copies that you have lying around of your own works or that publishers have sent you or uh your doubles we all have a couple of doubles man your auntie sent you the same comics that you already had because she thought she was being nice or whatever when you were uh 10 years old uh grab those doubles we need to create more comic book readers we need to be actionable about it and not just cry and complain that the readership is dwindling one of the things that we've come up with is dropping those doubles dropping those comps off at the free little local lending libraries in your neighborhood. You know, those freestanding, beautifully built uh, wooden constructs that have uh, voluminous amounts of reading material. Let's add some comic books to that, man, because we need, uh, we need to let people know that this medium is out there, still vital, and still exists. Also, uh, we invite you to like, follow, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit that bell so that we can notify you when new vids are available. This can uh, help mitigate that kayfabe effect a little bit, which is what happens whenever uh, we talk about the things that we talk about. This book got hold of the wizard effect because once they talk about it, uh, they that this issue goes up in value in a big way. And if you watch these videos to the end, that helps uh, push our YouTube videos out to other comic book loving YouTube viewers who haven't quite seen our channel yet. We're only 1% uh, toward our goal for our final subscriber base. So we really need your help to uh, put the word out there, man, so that we can in increase that base and makes that the daily videos uh, possible to do. And uh, without further ado, Jimmy, like uh, in the past, whenever I was testing out video equipment, trying to understand our AV for cartoonist kayfabe, uh, we did a run on uh, Alan Moore's Miracle Man with Jim Mahfoud and, and Ben Mara, but uh, we didn't show like all of this imagery we more talked about it as like kind of a book club but uh we tease it a couple of times man on the on the uh the destroy uh episode and and i think maybe um death of superman this is a comic that got pulled out but the difference was we had reprints and things uh, of that comic because this was a hard comic to find and we said it before we'll say it again ask not what cartoonist kayfabe can do for you ask what you can do for cartoonist kayfabe and shout to the audience member who sent us a copy of this luxurious comic. They sent a copy of Kaba and this and said, fight over it, boys. Good, good taste there. <laughs> Off the bat, dude, this is supreme Apex Tottlebin artwork Absolutely. throughout this thing. Yeah, phenomenal artist. Uh, collaborated with Alan Moore on Swamp Thing with Steve Bissett, of course. Made that book shine. Um probably his peak, you know, because he, he often did work, you know, I think of uh, Bissett as a collaborator with him. So doing his own work here and the line work, it really shows off his ability of as a draftsman, as an inker. Like his inking style, nobody inks like him. He was always in the background kind of like on some of that, jo uh, on that Swamp Thing stuff, because it would be Bissett and then Tottlebin, it would be Bissett like pencil or whatever. When you see some of those pencils, some of the most memorable stuff in, in those images it's taught been inclusions, like little frogs mm -hmm. and stuff jumping around. Those were not drawn in by Steve Bissett. You can see it in evidence in a pencil. So he, he was absolutely adding. It was a very uh, collaborative. It wasn't tracing. No, absolutely not. For my money, that is as good as any monthly comic art team in the history of comics. Absolutely. Those guys are phenomenal. Absolutely. Uh, so it's really cool to see some taught been kind of unmolested in terms of what are his compositions like. And it turns out that he doesn't like the grid either. No. And we will see that uh, throughout this entire book. And this is a nightmare story. You know, I think that's the other part that separates this comic from a lot of the big superhero fight kind of comics and why we were so critical of Death of Superman. Like, once you read this and then you read Death of Superman, you realize, like, tone-wise, that, that, that book really drops the ball in a lot of different ways. And you read this and it is the nightmare. These are two superpowers. When you think of superheroes and superpowers, this is what it is. It's yeah. end of the world kind of destruction is, is a possibility. Yes. It should be scary. Yes. And it was something that was never thought about in comics beforehand. Uh, and all of the sort of dashed out things. What What is the cover of Action Comics number one but Superman wielding uh, Herbie the Love Bug and smashing it onto rocks? And... 
you know, Superman punches guys, knocks them into buildings. Who's working in that office? Yes. You know what I mean? Uh, so that's explored here. Alan Moore is uh, engaging at that level of thought with a superhero battle. If we lived it, you know, if it was a more realistic approach, like, like what would the tenor of society be like while these two super beings are doing their thing? And his ultimate conclusion, too, is that the destroyer, like the, the bad guy, like you just have to be insane because what is left after you destroy everything? Literally nothing. Yes. What's the point? Love the way the superhero looks in this world, too, because it's that primary color costume. It should be bright and colorful the way we think of superheroes. That part's familiar. It's the set, It's the juxtaposition of the rest of the world around him where it's like, wow, this just doesn't feel right. You never forget this when no. you see it, right? It is like some jammies on uh, the clothes line and then your flayed skins. Yeah, totally disturbing. <laughs> Any opportunity Toddlebin has to like add bodies, he will put them. So you got your guys impaled by Big Ben's clock and then just rebar and steel beams. Skulls everywhere, rubble. And some of this art you can find in like the artist. There was an artist edition of some of these pages. I think it was an artifact edition, so not a complete reprinting of issues, but a lot of art. Yeah. And um, also when Marvel did their reprints, they included a lot of the original art in the backs of those reprints. So right. I, I was trying to figure where I first read this. And I honestly, I don't remember. It must have been early digital copies. Sure. Yeah, yeah, totally. Because I have before this, I had every issue but this one. Right. And the problem, the thing that bums me out is like, I was going to the comic shop when this thing cost nothing. Yes. Uh, I would love to see some original pages like from this because it looks like we have high contrast right. Xeroxes that are kind of pasted behind s some of the drawn stuff. Maybe I, even these buildings. Yeah, yeah. A lot of that stuff reminds me of that. Some of the rubble, too, even it maybe has hints of it. Maybe he's drawn on top of it. Not sure. But I love one, how scared Miracle Man looks. Yeah. Like, that's a great expression for a superhero who's facing a very challenge, you know, a, a grave challenge. And then our bad guy looks bad. Yeah. You know, it, that is not the bright primary colors in the middle of this world. That is, uh, that's an evil incarnate. Could this even be some of that skewed Xerox stuff where it's pulled because it's all moving in the same direction? Raining hands and feet. As a motif? Yeah, it's like, uh, you know, Book of Revelations kind of stuff. This is the end of the world. Yeah. So much ink on these pages, too. Again, you're not getting any short change of, like, close-up uh, arm taking up a third of the page. London Bridge destroyed. Red Seas with with mounds of bodies. Yes. And and uh, to your point of always showing a couple extras, let's impel several heads on this pike. <laughs> These warp smiths really don't fit into this story. Like, it's such a British kind of 2000 AD kind of construct. And if you actually get a hold of uh, Warrior Magazine, where this is first serialized, there are just independent stories about the warp smiths. So, so they're like, and it's not really necessarily the Miracle Man universe. So, like, Alan Moore's doing some stuff like bringing in these other things into. Uh, Big Ben was its own independent comic. You remember there's a guy called Big Ben uh, in uh, Miracle Man? There were Big Ben independent stories. Yeah, I didn't realize that. Yeah. Such sensitive lines. Really, really sensitive. Yeah, it's part of the reason, you know, I say, like, find that original art and see it, because there, there are examples of it out there, and it's it's really a service to Toddlebin to see what he what he was putting on these pages. And you know, Eclipse does a good job on their on their printing. Absolutely, these, these lines are nice and clear. Benefits of Baxter paper. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't absorb it as much as uh, as the newsprint. Going into banks and just throwing money around. Yeah, that feels like a very calculated image to include. Yeah, because I guess like what is uh, one of the interests in as a supervillain is larceny, money. The best way to support Cartoonist Kayfabe is to buy the comics that Ed Piscor and I make. Red Room Trigger Warnings 1 through 4 is in stores now while supplies last. Every Red Room comic is self-contained story, so whatever issue your comic shop has is a great place to start. There's also 
Red Room, The Antisocial Network, collecting the first season of Red Room, available now wherever comics are bought and sold, except for 28 countries where it is banned and about 10 comic shops where it's banned, but you can still request it, they can still get it for you, and you can pick up Hulk Grand Design by me, two double-sized issues retelling the 60-year history of the Incredible Hulk in one coherent story, featuring my art, writing, color, letters, uh, the Grand Design treatment, so to speak. So pick these comics up wherever you buy comics and support Cartoonist Kayfabe. And now back to our regular scheduled programming. Heading to San Diego Comic-Con? Get ready to see Scott Snyder himself by brushing up on your favorite Snyder comics with Comixology Unlimited. With Comixology Unlimited, you get unlimited access to an unrivaled library of over 40,000 digital comics, graphic novels, and manga titles, featuring content from over 125 publishers and thousands of independent creators from around the world, including exclusive titles from Scott Snyder. And if that's not enough, you can also save up to 15% when buying select new and current comics. Try Comixology Unlimited today with a free 30-day trial. For details, visit comixology.com unlimited. This is such a great piece, and you don't, you don't get it until you read the words, but the words are not describing what you're seeing. It's, it's really slick. The Warp Smith are extremely fast. As Kid Miracle Man is lunging towards him, the Warpsmith disappears him and re sort of builds him inside of a marble, like a marble mm-hmm. slab. Doesn't keep him very long. No. In fact, it destroys the whole building. Yeah, it's great how this story is tooled too as like a flashback, like after the fact. Yeah. Miracle Man reflecting on what he went through here. Yeah, because in the, in the next subsequent issues, you get full utopia and like what what is the world like when once superman saves the day from from doomsday what is that world like and you are scared the fuck out of that guy like you are going to be in lockstep with whatever he says yes. the warp smith's talking gang signs yeah you got to imagine things like um the authority they they a lot of this stuff traces back to co- this comic i think yeah really good use of by Toddlebin of going from panels to these like shattered fragments yeah that's what it is like a broken glass right yeah and using all kinds of spatter and technique. Like, who knows what the heck these circles are. Yeah, and just it's just hell. It's just demons. Switching up your media once again. Yes, for a flashback of a flashback kind of sequence. And Alan Moore kind of figures some stuff out because there are pages where he's, he's trying things and trying to get you to read to the bottom, and it doesn't work some of those times. But I think it's a pretty effective here because you are compelled to like drink in these images all the way down, and yeah. it's probably because of the style that's drawn. It's a it's a tonal shift that like reengages you. Uh, this comic is not white noise when you're dealing with that pen and ink, pen and ink. And when you get to this, your foundation has changed a little bit. You stick with it a little longer. It does feel like a progression. A lot of Alan Moore's work up to this point. And it does feel like this is kind of that big climactic moment of a lot of the superhero stuff based on the way I read his writing, which yeah. is like really thoughtfully looking at this stuff and asking questions. What if this happened? Right. Um, at some point, I feel like this is a conclusion that at least it makes sense within his comics. He he, he seems like a real like he likes Superman, you know, like that. That is a character that that is almost follows him throughout his career. And you just put a different varnish on them, but exploring those those themes. Got our warp smiths out of here. This this is so sharp as uh, the storytelling here as Miracle Man approaches, sees that our guy is jacked up with all these buildings sort of like laying on top of him, and we see the lunge, the pounce going through. Yeah, really good to subterranean depths. Uh, you look at the art of that, it could almost be no simpler, but it's fully effective. Right. That's the key, being able to read it, because it's such detailed art, it would be easy to uh, for the rendering to make it hard to read. Yes, and that is a, that is a speeding train. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, I think you have to be so clear, like, with the proportions. Like, if you fucked up the proportions of this, it would, it would throw everything off, but it's the perfect size, and the, um, the, the sort of choreography of the fight right here it really feels like they're throwing 20 punches a second and also very chaotic like they're both twisted up here i think this speaks to the savagery of like what we're doing where the hero is is 
really trying to take this guy who's already down, like really take him out. Yeah. It's a desperation. You are right, man. These these sort of panel designs really speak to the chaos of the moment. Yeah. I think this might be that great sequence where he's here like... it is right here. My apologists have claimed the car that I first hurled at Bates was empty. Those who'd been inside have all previously escaped. I'm sorry, but that isn't true. Yeah. You know, and that's great because he's talking about the propaganda of like what comes later, like the legend of Miracle Man and how he saved the day. And it is Action Comics number one, kind of. Yeah, definitely. And I bet that's not an accident. I, mean, I bet there's notes in that script and, and certainly in his mind. Yeah. They are just destroying the fuck out of one another. Right. And, and it looks like it. Yeah. Especially after... Uh, look at that figure, dude. You could lose it. What's well, great. A fuel, a flammable fuel truck burning hell and then crushing him with it. Yeah. But you could lose that guy right there and mistake him for some of these. Mm -hmm. But that is our guy. It's the same pose. One after the other. Look at that. That's neat. Again, these comics are so thoughtful that if that's a happy accident, I'll gi I give it credit. Like, it feels like it fits in. It feels like it's planned. So the Warp Smiths thought, okay, we're going to, like, dematerialize and bring this guy back inside of a Marvel slab. That didn't work. So option number two, let's take this rock and transport it into our boy's head. And that is ghastly shit right there. There's no brains anymore. It's just like little little remnants of memory or something, but the instincts are still there. It's like it's kind of like Vern Gagne uh, at the end of his day, you know what I'm saying? Uh, where he's going to try to protect himself. Does that uh, Warp Smith dude in, finishes he him He does, off. but he gets one last shot in. The Warp Smith accounts for himself well, you know, with, with this last eye beam that he's sending through him. And again, like the grotesque part of the fight, like this is just all out. Anything goes... Whatever you could possibly do to try to stop this guy. He's got rocks lodged in his skull. He's got an eye beam through his chest at this point. They've all been set on fire. There's only one thing he can do. And it was a traumatic experience, to say the least, that made the boy finally say Miracle Man to turn into this dude and bring back the demon. Uh, so the only way that he can get out of this painful predicament is he has to try to gurgle out and burp out the word miracle man which he does being able to draw this kind of thing too to really like express some sort of physical discomfort hard to draw absolutely and i mean you have to do it like that toddleman's got to nail this for this to be as effective as possible yeah and this has to happen on this side of the book because you need it to be the page turn where the metamorphosis happens and it's the doe-eyed innocent boy and, by the way, when he got dematerialized out, if you remember, he was getting raped in, like, a boy's home. So his pants are down, and he's in that exact same position when that first thing happened. Uh, the boy is that naive kid and is so sad that he allowed that to happen. And he sees the destruction. Miracle Man realizes, like, he has this vulnerable f figure It's and uh, assures the boy that he has found a way to make sure that Kid Miracle Man will never come back. We will never have to deal with this problem. And this this curse, little Johnny Bates, Master Bates, as they call him before they have his way with him in previous issues, we're going to cure you right here and now. Snap. Crunch. You see the blood gimmicks right there. You see the boy is so happy. Yeah, and look how mangled up miracle burnt. man is he had that gas truck burn his face off a little freaking cum shot of blood <laughs> on his face and uh this is one of those pieces that i was looking at that i don't th i bet if we see the or or like the printed page zero of these i think are uh the original art because there's all kinds of drawing yeah, it makes me want to dig it out now and see if that's uh if that's in any of those co copies i have yeah but it's the same moment different shards as the, the the camera pulls pulls out, love the coloring of that background. This it's, right here? Or no, this? like here. You yeah. know, it's it's just destroyed. It's destruction. Yeah. There's no daylight visible. All you right. know, I can just imagine the sky is black. Yeah. Tattered ass outfit. 
Yeah, that's the money shot I always think of with this issue. You don't think you, you don't forget this one. And I wonder if that's where it's pulled from. Um, you know that previous page. It looks almost too small to be to be blown up, but yeah, it looks like a shrunken version of this stuff. Because cool like, look at the fidelity. Yeah, it's like like the bit the big one is bigger. You know. But I love how that shard fits into the two-page splash. Yeah. Just them in the midst of all this. So, like, little Johnny Bates, the boy, like, is seeing this before he gets his neck snapped. Yeah, and it's so deranged. Yeah. Arms yeah. severed, running with their children. We've, we've seen photo, like, like Vietnam combat photography and shit. Like, you know, Pulitzer Prize winning photos that were some version of that. It's genuinely disturbing. Oh, yeah. And these are, you know, these are refugees. Like, these are the last people. These are the people who are going to carry on the tale and talk about, you know, that, that faithful day, that faithful experience. And again, you get those primary colors. The, the still saturated blue colors is uh, against that ghastly world. That was two years ago. So this is the modern day. And all of the desiccation, like, they're nothing but bleached skeletons now. Now it's time to pick up the pieces and uh, create your utopia. And that's the last uh, Alan Moore issue when he sets up the fascistic ubermensch who's looking down on all the people from his citadel in, in the sky with them little plants with the lips. You yeah. remember that? The little plants, plants with the lipstick? I love the To Be Concluded. That's a really strong piece. You know, I think that... I always think of the lettering as part of these pages, and I feel like that's a really nice, almost poetic comic book piece of lettering. Do you have the Neil Gaiman issues? I have, like, one or two, and, the, and uh, he and Mark Buckingham are going to conclude like that was just announced very recently uh after alan morph does his last piece i don't know where they can go from there and i'm very curious what uh th how those new gaiman issues read and what the plan is and was and if after 35 40 years what has changed it's going to be an interesting book to take a look at, man. There was a comic scene I had as a kid, and it was, and it had Neil Gaiman talking about his Miracle Man plans. You know, it was after he, had, I guess, started it. Right. Um, yeah, it was a, it was a, a certainly an anticipated book at the time. This is, uh, this is our um, argument for you know best, most gruesome, violent, gory superhero uh, battle. What's yours? Put something down in the in the comments. You know, we've, we've put a couple contenders. That's a great question. I'm curious to see what people come back with. Because ultimately, when I think of superhero genre, that's the defining quality, is that is, is the fights. Sure. So, uh, yeah, fits well with the whole kayfabe wrestling connection as well. Jimmy, I got to go take a look at my Iran Contra scandal trading <laughs> cards. Uh, let's get out of here. Kayfabers, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell. We'll notify you when new vids are available. What's out there, Jim? Hulk Grand Design Monster Madness are both issues in comic stores now everywhere. Uh, while supplies last, pick those up. It's retelling the 60-year history of the Incredible Hulk in one giant epic story. I'm writing, drawing, penciling, ink, and coloring. The Grand Design treatment, so to speak. And uh, join me on patreon.com slash jimrug where you can see more of my comics art process and download some of my out-of-print zines and mini-comics. Red Room Trigger Warnings Issue 1, 2, 3, and 4 are in stores right now. So is the Red Room Anti-Social Network Trade Paperback. Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit is the name of the game. Every issue is completely self-contained. Uh, it's banned in more than 28 countries. It's banned in more than 10 comic shops. If your comic shops are dry from uh, Red Room, you got to go to my link tree in the description below this video. Hit up the Fantagraphics website. You could order and pre-order the comics that way. You could go to my Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash edpiscor for three bucks. Uh, you can hit the archive, read all the Red Room comics. I put new strips up every Tuesday. And we are starting Cartoonist Kayfabe comic book Christmas in July. It's going to be the last Saturday in July. And we implore you to fill up your free local lending libraries uh, within your neighborhood and, and surrounding towns. Put some comic books in in those uh, libraries, and uh, let's 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 sow the seeds of a, a new comics readership. What else do we have out there, Jimmy? Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find links to Cartoonist Kayfabe T-shirts and merchandise below this video. Another great way to support the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel. Given those marching orders, we'll be on our way, Jim. Read more comics.